Hello and welcome to General Chemistry 2. My name is Daniel and in this video we're going to go over some more thermodynamics units, being those being entropy and Gibbs free energy. And we're primarily going to focus on how they re, uh, relate to what's called spontaneously occurring processes. So we're going to first define what a spontaneous process is and then go into entropy and Gibbs free energy and see how they can tell us about the spontaneity of a reaction. So the first thing is, let's define what is a spontaneous reaction. A reaction is said to be spontaneous if it occurs, if it progresses forward independently without any outside forces, meaning no work is done to make this uh, reaction go forward. Some uh, physical examples of that would be something like a waterfall. So we know a waterfall goes down because of the force of gravity all on its own without any kind of external force. However, it's not going to go back up the uh, cliff that it's falling off of spontaneously. So we say that the waterfall runs down spontaneously, whereas the reverse is non-spontaneous. We can also think about it in terms of something like heat flow. We know that um, heat flows from hot to cold temperatures. This occurs spontaneously because it happens automatically. But we're not going to see um, heat going from cold to hot without some um, external force making that happen. In terms of a chemical reaction, we could think of a reaction with a metal with water. For example, sodium metal reacts with water that forms sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. But if we took sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas and mixed them together, the reverse of the reaction wouldn't happen spontaneously. It would need some kind of input for it to occur. So that's the definition of spontaneous reaction. It occurs automatically without um, any external force or work applied to the system. Now one thing to keep in mind is that when we're talking about spontaneous process, we're talking about it from the standpoint of thermodynamics, meaning that it occurs without the input of heat or work. This is different from thinking about it from the standpoint of kinetics. We can have a spontaneous reaction that occurs very, very slowly or one that occurs instantaneously. So it's just important to keep in mind that sp a spontaneous process doesn't imply an instantaneous process. And we'll see an example of that dealing with uh, graphite and diamond later in this video. So now that we've established what a spontaneous reaction is, let's get into our um, first thermodynamic principle, which is entropy. So recall that in general chemistry one, we went in depth with enthalpy. That was um, delta H or just H. So entropy and Gibbs free energy are the other two primary thermodynamic um, constants and val values that we'll go into. So the sign for entropy is an S and we can define entropy as the measure of how dispersed the energy within a system can be um, in terms of different ways it can contain energy. So that's a bit of a mouthful but what we can think of that as is saying when we have a molecule, we know that we have three main types of motion. There's translational motion, there's rotational motion, and there's also um, vibration. So translational motion is just a linear movement of the molecule. Rotation and vibration, you can see examples in the picture. So what entropy essentially is, is looking at the number of ways that energy can be contained within the different kinds of energies of vibration and rotation. A more simple way to look think about entropy is entropy is a measure of the disorder of a system. I think the easiest way to visualize that is through something like phase changes. For example, let's think about a, a gas versus a solid. So a gas has freely flowing particles, freely flowing molecules, they're not attached to one another or anything like that. Whereas in a solid, we have a crystal structure where everything's very rigid and not very moving. So what we can say based on that is that a gas has a significantly higher entropy because the disorder of a gaseous system is significantly higher because there's no fixed crystal pos uh, lattice positions or anything like that. One of the other ways that we can look at entropy is through something that's known as microstates. So, we have all these pictures here. Um, 
So the way we'll look at it is like this. Let's say that each of these circles is a different molecule. Just um, call it A, B, C, or D, whatever. So there's a number of different ways if we have two compartments here that are connected to one another like you see in the picture. There's a number of different ways we could propose that the different particles can be arranged here. You see in um, this first one here, we have a state where all four particles are on the same side of this container. So that's one possible microstate here. Another one is where we have three on the left and one on the right, and you see that there's four total for that situation. And then we can also have an even distribution, as we see in uh, Roman numeral three. We can have two on each side, and we see there's a total of six there. So what we can say then is we can, we can um, for each of these Roman numerals, we can say how many microstates out of the total number are possible. So for example, the probability of having everything on the left side would be one out of 11 where 11 is the total number of microstates we have here. For 2, it would be 4 out of 11. And for 3, it would be 6 out of 11. So what we see here is that for each of these distributions, possible distributions, multiple microstates exist. And what we'll see is that the most probable microstate is the one that has the highest entropy. As we said before, Entropy is a measure of how dispersed the energy of a system is among the different ways it can contain energy. So if there's more different microstates, that would mean a higher energy. So what we're going to say here is that distribution 3 is the most probable because it has the most microstates, the most possible arrangements out of all the uh, configurations here. And so we can look at the probability of having all the particles on the left side with increasing amounts of particles. So if we have just one particle, obviously the probability of it being on the left side is just one half. As we increase, our probability just increases one over two to the n power. And so what we see is if we get to some big number of particles, like Avogadro's number here, the probability of every particle, all 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles or molecules being on the left side is pretty much astronomically low. One over two times, one over two to the Avogadro's number power, which is basically 10 to the negative 10 to the 23rd. So an, an almost immeasurably small number. So what we can say then is that as more particles are added to the system, the probability of having them all in one side diminishes exponentially. And this gives us an interesting result. So we know that a gas system will reach equilibrium between two containers. It'll be the, you know, the same concentration of gas molecules on both sides if we have two containers or uh, two attached um, flasks or something like that. So the reason we can say for that is because that, that state of having an even distribution has the most microstates and thus the highest probability of occurring. So what we can say is that evenly distributing particles between two containers gives us the maximum entropy, and that's why it's what usually occurs. So the mathematical way we can relate entropy to microstates is something known as the Boltzmann equation. So we mentioned that um, distribution 3 from that previous slide would be most probable because there's an even distribution. And what we can say is that the, ent the total entropy is going to be equal to k times the ln of w, where w is the number of microstates possible. And k is just a um, given constant. So as we did with enthalpy, entropy is typically measured as changes in entropy within a system or reaction. So what we can say then is if we have a change in entropy equal to the final entropy minus the initial entropy, we can say that the change in entropy is k times ln of final microstates over initial microstates. So that means if a reaction has more microstates after it completes than it did prior, that means delta s is greater than zero. Entropy has increased. Disorder has increased. Vice versa. <laughs>